All right, let's dig in. Let's dig in. Um, after the hostilities, after the hostilities, a little look back, and we're not just looking back and then restating the things. Um, not interested in that, and there's a lot of that. You don't need me for that. What we're trying to do is see if there's something else we can learn or a different perspective that maybe by being living in a world where the similar perspectives are always being explored, maybe there's one sort of left unturned or more than one. And not maybe. There always is. There's thousands of perspectives on anything. Um, you know, I had this... Con I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Before we dig into these fights, I'm going to tell you a conversation I had. Um, I did an interview for um, Sports Skida. Or it's, it's Skida is a part of the... It's a website in India. Um, I have been working... I've started a, a journey of, of contributing analysis and commentator, commentating for Brave CF. Brave CF, Brave Combat Federation. You can find them on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And I believe starting September 21st, I'm going to be live there to, uh, contributing commentary and analysis at these shows. Uh, that one will be in Abu Dhabi. And that's tremendously exciting. So I was doing an interview with a l very large sports website in India. And we were talking about commentary and analysis. And uh, they were asking me how and why I do it differently. And I said, Everybody should do it differently. We're all different. We're all different. We're talking about art or, or sport or whatever you want to whatever whatever you want to call it. Um, how, why on earth, when there's thousands of perspectives, would we all say the same one? And the answer to that is uh, uh, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan's the answer to that. And very quickly, let me. Yeah, and you can go look for it. I'll, I'll Mark. Can we add the the link to their um, thing here? There, um, we'll add the link to this interview. It was a really cool one I did. Uh, again, different countries, you have different perspectives. And so we talked a lot about martial arts. But Joe Rogan is one of the most influential people in the world. Okay? I'm sorry. I promised you this is called um, Enjoy the Hostilities. And we are going to talk about TJ versus Cody and Demetrius Johnson and Henry. Yes, we are. But this, this matters to contextualize it. And this is what you get with long-form stuff as we can meander. So why does everybody see and talk about fighting the same way? Why do we all say more or less the same things? Why do, you know, if you grab commentators from 27 organizations around the world, why do they all say the same thing? Is that all that's happening? No. It is because Joe Rogan is one of the most influential speakers in the world. Okay? Now, before I go into Joe Rogan, the commentator and analyst and genius, let's just support that statement. Joe Rogan is the most influential, one of the most influential speakers in the world. Okay, just that statement. You know how we can support that statement? Just Google him or go on YouTube and put in Joe Rogan and you will see, what, hundreds of millions for sure. Mark, what do you think? What's more than 100 million? Trillion? I mean, shit. Like some of his things have 10 and 12 million. So 100 million would be very easy to, to quantify. So Joe Rogan has hundreds of millions to trillions of people that have made the decision and the choice consciously to consume what he has to say. Mark just adjusted the camera. Um, if you're listening on, on sound, you don't give a shit about that. But if you're watching, you're like, whoa, what happened? That was Mark. Um, trillions. Trillions of people have said, I want to hear what Joe Rogan has to say. On topics like sport, martial arts, politics, humanity, science, religion, you fucking name it. We want to hear what Joe has to say. So we live in a world, we use the term influencer. That's the term that people use to talk about people who sell t-shirts or get you to follow something. And don't worry, we'll, we'll get to talking about TJ and Cody in a bit. Um, Joe Rogan is an influencer. He influences people. You know why that makes me happy? Because he fucking thinks and he asks you to think and he, prov uh, he provokes thought and he looks at things from multiple angles. The, if we're going to allow somebody to, sh to help us take options of ways we can look at things, Joe's a pretty fucking good one. 
right? He doesn't push his agenda. And you, hey, you'll, you, maybe you'll argue with that if there are moments, you can use singular moments, but if you use the grand scheme of it, he's looking for enlightenment and he's looking, he's on a journey of discovery constantly more and more and more and he's sharing it with people. So as influencers go, one, Joe's undeniably one of the most influential speakers in the world. And two, that's probably a good thing in the world that we live in. We need less this is the way it is and more. Why is it that way? And could there be another way? That's what Joe does. But now that we've decided, agreed, and we see, with it's hard to argue, that Joe is one of the most influential speakers going, when Joe describes martial arts, when Joe describes combat, mixed martial arts, etc., he describes it from the perspective of one human mind and the experience and lifetime of that human mind. So Joe talks about fighting, talks about you can use any of the examples of his perspective and it's a beautiful one trust me i don't listen to a lot anymore because i want to think for myself but when joe's on i gotta listen because he's brilliant and a big part of it is you see he sees it based on his lifetime so he has his own curiosities and interests and things that excite him and talks about those um and one another thing that you hear is his actual passion so now when you hear somebody else commentate, somebody, it's a huge right hand. Oh my God, that's crazy. They're just being Joe Rogan. He's influential. When he speaks, it influences other people. People imitate the way he speaks. Nobody's saying, I want to be like Joe Rogan, but they've heard this done, done so wonderfully and beautifully that they think it's the way to do it. It's not the way to do it. It's a way to do it. It's Joe's way to do it. And to... To constantly, everything is a huge right hand and everything is and power and precision. Oh, that was an unbelievable time. That's Joe. That's not commentary, right? So because of this, because of early on, we were lucky enough to have somebody near perfect and, and inspiring and, and influential do something but he was so good at it and you heard it so much that everybody just started doing it the way he does it, right? So as a result, everybody has a very similar perspective. You hear this when you watch or listen to mixed martial arts in smaller shows. Somebody will go to the ground and, they will, and the commentator will say, okay, let's see what kind of ground game he has. Let's see what kind of game he has off his back. That is one of a hundred million possible thoughts you could have at that time. That's Joe's thought. You know why? His love of jiu-jitsu, his appreciation for the guard, his, his view that when that happens, that's not your game. Now that can be my game. I'm, he's curious about what my game will be from this perspective. It's an under, no matter how many times he said it, people still don't always see it that way. Um, we saw other things take shape later where all of a sudden people were saying, um, the guard is dead. You just get, get up. Joe's like, no, it isn't. And, and people informed, no, that was a moment. That wasn't. Anyways, that's Joe's. But you'll hear other guys say it. You could talk about the texture of the carpet. You could talk uh, of the mat. You could talk about the lighting in the place. You could talk about the blood flow up to the brain. You could talk about what it feels like on your knees. You could talk about the options and the choices, what this guy could do, what that guy could do, what it feels like, what happened when they did it before, the history of these positions. Thousands. This man likes this perspective. He's interested in it. It fascinates him. And we hear it. We find him fascinating. And we hear his emotion and his passion. And we find that exciting. And then we imitate it. Right? So as a result, we only have... And then... So that is... That's one. That's one aspect. That's the most influential voice that we've ever had. It's still the best one by far. But you don't fucking copy it. The reason you like it is because it's individual. The reason you're the reason Joe has so many people who like him, that follow him, that are influenced by him, is because he's an individual. He's different. If you like someone who's different, the answer isn't be just like them. That's not different. That's imitation. So the same thing happens. You have on different arcs, Ariel Hawani, very influential as well, very compelling, great speaker, great interviewer. 
uh, something about his personality and the way he interacts. His, and he has a passion for the story. He has a passion for the debate. He has a passion for the structure and title shots and all of these things. So he influenced. He became the prototype of the journalist, the interviewer, the, the drama guy, the guy who talks about all the things around it. And then people just started imitating him. He's interested in who deserves the next title shot. He's interested in how the, how the pay-per-views were bought. He's interested in all these particular things. And then everyone imitates him. So as a result, we only have fucking a, a thousand people imitating the perspectives of two influencers. And that's just fucking stupid. That's just fucking stupid. There's millions of perspectives. All of which we could take. So that's, I'm sorry that I did what I do and I, but that's, this is what long form is. This is what long form is. We're trying to explore how and why. And what if I get to the end of that and go, you know what? I'm wrong. This, 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 this. Well, great. We're along for a trip. If you, you know, we're not along for the formula. And I guess this is the root of it. I want to reject the formulas. They're old and they're dated and they suck. And, you be, and people become bound by them. So we're trying to avoid the obvious. So what, where, why am I saying all of this? Why, why was any of that necessary? And the biggest reason, I think, is to reject what we think we know or to reject what we think the conversation is. And that is a difficult thing to ask of any of us. I try to do it. This guy that you was most influential in the world, he does it all the time. He doesn't lock himself into a belief and then defend it at all costs. The crazy thing is we do this all the time. And I de please don't take offense to this, but we do it with things we know almost nothing about. And then we fight about them. So I have seen some of the craziest comments treated as normal and discussed as fact about TJ versus Cody. Weird, weird perspectives when you've dis if you decide to take as many as possible and that we know very little. We, we know very little. And the, if we ab admit that we know very little and we admit that there's, there's so much yet to know and that we'll, we'll laugh at our own knowledge in 5, 10, 20, 40 years if we're lucky to be alive, then we don't do that. I've seen people say that first, Cody has no chin. I'm just going to write down some of them off the top of my head. Cody, no chin. Cody, too emotional. Cody, Cody uh, needs to go up a weight class. Did you see that one? Has that been? No, I've seen that. To go up a weight class. Uh, Cody, um, too tight. Cody, uh, overrated. Um, Cody, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Before we even, even uh, he was head hunting. Cody was head hunting. Head hunting. Uh, yeah. So before we even explore any of these, let's explore one thought. Why the fuck aren't we talking about TJ? Right? Like, I'm seeing 90%. And not that I, you know, fixating on what people see. This is, this is a mistake on my part anyways. But I was curious. And I was wondering. And I was like, and... Why aren't we talking about what TJ's doing? TJ beat that guy. He beat him. He beat him smartly and soundly and strategically and with talent and skill and technique. And if, if Cody has no chin, so TJ dropped, so the, the beginning of, before we got to that cage, drop back, Boom! Just fucking drilled him with the right hand. Cody came forward again. He dropped back a second time. Boom! Drilled him with that right hand. Then he dropped back a third time. Boom! Drilled him with that right hand. And all of us have seen people lay out people with one of those. Many times. That happens all the time because the other guy's moving forward. He's tight. He's aggressive. He's driving forward. And the collision that takes place is the force of this moving automobile smashes into the force of that moving automobile driving down the highway. Guys get laid out like that all the time. We've been seeing it for the last six, eight years as the game of drawing and planting and landing. It's these types of traps. Uh, the, the pressure fighters 
you know, Aldo and Barrow being two of the best, they, that era, they owned that era. We had to find an answer to the pressure fight, and this became one of them, and it changed the game. So we see guys get laid out with that. If Cody has no chin, then TJ punches like a little girl. And I don't mean to be rude to, like, eight-year-old girls, but they don't punch as hard as professional fighters, right? Like, what, I mean, right, Mark? Like, if, if guys get knocked out with one punch all the time in this position, if you're going to say, for, and we're going to talk about what no chin means, too, but because this is what we do. We don't want to talk about explore the same things. We want to talk about the questions behind the questions, the, the, the reasons behind the reasons. But, I mean, if you, can't, if, if you can knock a guy out with, if everybody knocks people out with one punch, if you see it all the time and it took him three, if Cody has no chin, then that means TJ punches like an eight-year-old girl, right? Yeah, he would have been, it would have been the same situation when Anderson landed the jab on Forrest. That would have been the case. Yeah, why, no chin. Why, did it, why would it take three, and even after the third, we will criticize the other guy's ability to take punishment? I think one of the things was, uh, like a lot of people say, when Cody gets hit and he gets rocked, he has that thousand-mile stare. So people, yeah. t I think, associate that for some reason to having no chin or being chinny yeah, or but being susceptible to it. I mean, just this moment, right? Like, three drills in a world where we see one of them, that means he doesn't, I guess this guy just doesn't hit hard. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. But while we're there, and, and why am I talking about these things? Really, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm always hoping for change, Right? I'm always hoping for a change. I really am. And I know that's hard. And I know it's not always wanted. And I know it's rejected. And I know sometimes people are like, get the fuck out of here. We don't want change. We just want to go with this. But I can't help myself. But chin is a slag. It's not science. Like that guy's got no chin is stuff that people used to say, the coach and the team, they would say that to get under his skin or to like be rude to him. This is not science. This is not fact. This is not a measurement. Like I've got a six, but TJ's got a nine. Like these are not, this is not Dungeons and Dragons. You know what I mean? Like we don't have a sheet of attributes. Uh, and this is perpetuated by conversation like the more we act like that's a thing and people be like of course it's got a chin it's the last thing to go or the first thing to go or look at chuck liddell or like you'll use one or two examples but those one or two examples do not factually tell this story you know if a guy get, gets hit too much or some can get it these are all just platitudes and shit that people say how you get hit varies with every shot some was a soft, gentle one that just for some reason, like you hit Brock Lesnar, the right person hits him and he falls down and the wrong person hits him and he, Shane Carwin hits him in a different spot and where are you at that day and how much fluid do you have in you and, and yes, how much abuse you've taken in your life is one of the thousands of variables and how you're moving when you get hit. How you're able to move, you know, how tight you are, where you're moving, the, 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 the it's thousands of things, thousands. So at one time, Edson Barbosa, people, oh, there's a lot of questions about his chin. But then Habib hit him, what, 200 times? So Habib hits like a, do you understand what I'm saying? These things don't just work, you know, in moments you chew, ah, you know, he's got no chin. Like, that's not even a real thing. But people would argue, of course it's a real thing. Why? Because you were told once it was, or you've heard it for so many years that you think that's true. This is what I'm trying to get at when I'm talking about the influence of, of you know, even a brilliant perspective that's only a single perspective, or the influence of hearing something long enough that you think it's true. Of course, everybody knows that you got a chain, and when you lose it, you lose it. Here's many examples. It's just not fact. It's not fact. You know? It isn't. We can get, you get a neurosurgeon and a long experienced boxer, and even if you want to believe that's so, when they say, yeah, well, this guy fought 900 times and never got knocked out, but this guy at 22 years old has no chin. If you see that and you think those are the exceptions, they're not. It's all exceptions, it's all different. There is no generality. You know, there is none. And I know that the act of describing things on television, this is a fucking challenging job in the moment. 
for my guys like Anik and Joe and fucking DC. I've I've done this job 475, 490 times. It's fucking hard. But and sometimes we will just lay back. We do it. They do it. They lay back on the things that you knew because you knew them. But you have to always go back and question what you know. That was what I was saying about why Joe is such a, a positive, influential force because that's what he does. And that's what long-form podcasts can allow you to do. They can allow you to go back and go, wait a second. I mean, I knew, I know this. Everybody knows this. A lot of times we just agree everybody knows this and we never really questioned it. And things that made sense. We're going to talk about this later when we get to Conor McGregor versus Habib fight preview. Sometimes the things that are, you, you got to push it. You got to push through plateaus. They're hard. If we say, well, wait a second, you know, the idea of a chin or once you're shot, you're shot, or you can only take so much damage, or some guys take punches better than others, or any of these television generalities, if we go back and say, well, that's not necessarily so, well, now we got work to do, and we have friction, and we have trouble, we have, we have stress. We want to make our world as, all of us, all of our world, as easy to understand as possible. That's normal. That's what it is to be a human being. And we feel comfort when we find out that some, okay, that's that. Okay, he hits hard, but his chin held up. That's easy. But it also stops us from going further. Accepting the easy, the shit that people have believed always, that stops you from going further. It stops you. It prevents you. And then you prevent yourself. So, and we could do that with every single one of these things. And we, and we make these statements, that kid's too emotional. Now, if you're making that statement and you're, or you couldn't get his emotions in check or he gets too wound up with this guy, if you're making that statement and you're 20 years old and you have no particular training in, in performance or fighting or you know, self-control or mindfulness or study of self, if you have none of that, then why would any of that, like, why would that make any sense to you? Because you know, full out, and, and, or why would that be a knock? Or why would that be an explanation? That's true of all of us in all time. Even, and again, it is not an attribute. Because if it was an attribute that Cody was in an incredible performer with, with confidence through the roof that could not be, you know, shaken, which is what we would have said, after he beat Dominic Cruz. Go watch that fight. Go watch him fight Dominic Cruz. And then pretend you don't know anything else. And tell me about Cody's uh, uh, confidence, about his comfort, about his... What's the word I'm looking for where you're like, you know, relaxed in a situation or you're like poise. We're These are the words we use. So tell me about Cody's poise. Watch that fight. Pretend you know nothing else. Tell me what, what is the poise of this young man? Well, it's this. Okay, since we believed it was that, now that it wasn't that on August 4th, whenever that fight was, 2018, the other weekend, well, that means this is some kind of flaw or something went wrong or he was too this or not enough that or he's no, he doesn't have it anymore. No, this thing, his fight with Dominic Cruz was not permanent. It was not a set attribute. This wasn't who he is. It was who he was that day. And how he fought TJ the first time was who he was that day. And how he was this weekend was who he was that day. We're all like that. One day someone cuts you off and you smile. And the next day they cut you off and you scream and you want to kill them. One day your wife or your girlfriend or your mother or your neighbor says something nice to you and you're so appreciative. The next day you ignore it because you're distracted. We're humans. We're not things. We want to, we want to, his chin is this, his poise is this, his confidence is this. None of that is true. None of that is true. We're all plastic and malleable. And that's good news. Because if something isn't quite going the way you want it in your life, through effort and learning, self-study, the application of effort, you can change it. And when it's going really well, and then later it doesn't, you can study what was different about me and is there some way that I can control or shape my performance to maximize my likelihood that I perform at my best. 
that's the truth, at least the truth as we know it so far about performance, is that the more information we have and the more we do work, it's emotional labor, it's fucking work. The more we study ourselves, we study our preparation, and we truly understand the truths and we, and we assess them and we're honest about them and we deal with them, right? So when we compare the two Cody fights, Cody uh, TJ fights, they're two different fights. The result was the same. And people will, you know, and again, in our list of things that we will try, we need to explain this. We will say, well, he didn't make those same mistakes. He didn't move his head here. And now he's doing that. They're different fights. They're different nights and they're two different Cody's and two different TJ's. And you're a different you now than at the beginning of this podcast. And you're going to be a different you. You're one now because you've changed. You're always changing. We're always changing. We're always gathering information and we're always shaping who we are. And that's what is going on here. Cody, so I just had a random offside thought, but uh, we mentioned uh, my friend Ariel earlier. He pointed out somewhere, that, so I'm using his, um, somebody passed on a stat that he had passed on. So I haven't fact-checked this, and I'm sure there may be some variation on it. But somewhere in there, it was either him or somebody else you know, at the top of that style of journalism, uh, said that it, immediate rematches of people who lost the belt, that there's been almost nobody win. Have you heard any of this, Mark? So that you fight... And then you rematch me right after. You lose your belt to me and rematch. Now, you know, we have Joanna Jinjacek and we have Cody Garbrandt in modern, recent, like right now history. I can't think of there any. There was uh, Anderson, but that was a freak accident because yeah, he broke his But leg. he didn't win either. Exactly. Second yeah. time. I mean, we're just, those are the three recent ones that come to mind, but they didn't win. Now, how could that be? Why would that be? And when we say, well, confidence or shake and whatever, those are things we say, but do we really know what they mean? And the effect of losing, which we may not be able to yet define exactly, we can define physiological effects. There's a rise in cortisol, a drop in testosterone. We can, we can define some of the experiences of some experience, depression or loss or whatever. You also, I've seen this in, you know, the 475 shows of 5,000 fights I've commentated. I've seen this. People lose. They want it back right away. They want a do-over. But it, ain't, it isn't a do-over. You're not the same person and neither are they. You know, even Robbie Lawler fought, I think, Jake Allenberger right yep. after he lost to Hendricks yep. in that towel fight. Yeah, like, that wasn't a media rematch either. He yeah. needed a little bit of time to recover. Yeah, and get exactly. Back. So Ra Lawler did not fight him right after he did the right smart thing. If this is so, that doesn't mean it's so forever. It means something's at play here that needs to be examined. These people can change these things. This is real. Like sports psychology is a science that has been studied. And you, know, and, and you go back on the YouTube channel, we got David Mullins, good friend. He's worked with some of the highest people. And I've studied with him sports psychology. And, and we have, it's documented, we have a number of good psychology PhDs that we talk with a lot. I saw Tracy Trudeau in Calgary. Uh, Joel, Dr. Joel Lapata. How are you, Dr. Joel? Hope you're good. I saw him very briefly in Winnipeg or in Toronto after our show. And Dr. David Klonsky, you, you know, we chat with him all the time. These are, and we, we ask these questions and we get slightly different observations, all based in science with just a little twist of questions that are, these are, this is all real shit. Otherwise, could be a statistical anomaly. Why does everybody lose? They, well, they get an immediate rematch. But they're different because every single fight is different. Everything is a fresh environment. Everything is, a, is an individual moment in time. But you're different. So those two fights don't have much to do with each other other than he lost them both and he won them both. But there's so much at play here. And all I'm trying to do is implore you, don't just grab the thing that sounds right and then argue it. Grab the thing that sounds right and then start asking questions about it. And I mean, you don't have to do any of this. If you're listening to this podcast, you're hoping I do some of that for you. But I'm also trying to get you to think and, and not just about fighting. You know, we spend a lot of time 
you know, being certain that we know a lot of things. And if we question even some of the fundamental knowledges that we have in areas, I do it in fighting because that's where I learn about life. You know, this is my job and my calling. It's what I love to do. But it also allows me to learn about life. And whatever you have, whatever thing you're really into, it can do that for you too. But you just sometimes reject your own understanding of what happened, you know. Um, and for some reason we tend, and maybe it's just because Cody's a compelling individual, but we, we tend to focus on the, the failure. I'm, and if you're listening, I'm putting it in finger quotes, the failure. There was a success in there too. And what if in the end, the simplest answer is TJ's better than that guy right now? I mean, that doesn't, it's not sexy. It's not a sexy answer. But what if that's the answer? And all these other theories are just things we're saying because, you know, it's fun to debate. Yeah, all these other theories discredits the preparation by Dwayne Ludwig, yeah. the technique, all the drilling, all the sparring yeah. partners that he flew in, all that stuff gets thrown out of the window when you start attributing to his exactly. chin or he's too emotional. All that stuff gets discredited exactly. right away. Exactly. And, you know, we will know much more about this in 10 or 20 or 30 years. But if and when you have a, again, I'm using my finger quotes, off night, that is a credit to me if I, if I beat you. That is a credit to me. Something happened. We, and some of our simple explorations is, you know, we, I shook your confidence or I got in your head or I made you hesitate or I made you over aggressive. But any of those things are, are, are at least in part due to the dynamic of you and I together. Is it just the weirdest fucking coincidence in human history that Eddie Alvarez, one of my very favorites ever, and this is, will ne I will never knock him. I, and I can't knock fighters because I know that, that these are just result, re results and reactions to dynamics and moments. But Eddie had his, the worst night of his life against Conor McGregor. Is that a fucking coincidence? Or is that in, due in some part to Conor? And even if you hate Conor, What's the chances that Connor had the best night of his life exactly at the moment that he had his worst? This dynamic was created between them. So you must credit the winner. You must credit TJ. You must credit Dwayne. You must credit the work. In fact, don't credit Dwayne or TJ. Just credit the work. And if you do that, there's valuable shit in there we can learn. Because whenever you're in doubt, if you just add more work, if you just add, learn either to how to work a little smarter and a little harder, and it'll probably help you. And if we are sitting there looking for failures or explanations of why things failed, I don't think we're, we're, we're not giving credit to the truth of the dynamic, and we're not fucking learning anything valuable in our life. And this is this really cool thing that happens between two men or two women that gives us a chance to learn about life and to learn about winning, and to learn about growth, and to learn about becoming a better, stronger, you know, more evolved human being, you know? So, um, that's, those are my thoughts on that. And uh, again, a lot of the time these days, there's so much talk on the micro, and I love the micro. That, those three right hands that he landed, you know, as he drew that man in, and, and yes, of course, knowing there could be a right hand in that situation. And yes, through whatever tools they use to make, to create a, a dynamic where Cody may have been aggressive. Yes, all those things matter. But when he plants that right foot behind him, watch his hip as, it, as the mechanics of that go and land on, on Cody's jaw three times over and over again. Even the third one. How often do you see that? I've seen Cub do it a couple of times. You don't see it very often. So... Cody is trying to will his way through. He took two, but there won't be a third, and he's not wrong 99 times out of 100. So there's a really fascinating thing going there. Also, maybe last thing on, on that, those punches. I had a long and interesting conversation with Coach Mark Henry on my Instagram channel, at Robin Black MMA. I, I do a lot of one-minute breakdowns, and I did one on Frankie knocking out Chad Mendes. Now, the, all of my UFC ones have since been removed. Um, that's on story for another day. That's to me, that's, that doesn't make any sense. Um, but that is large businesses do weird things all the time. Uh, and they have corporate reasons for them anyway. So now 
you will find breakdowns from all over the world, all different kinds of martial arts. Uh, Brave, who I'm proud to work for, as well as TKO. I'm proud to work for KSW. I, I love contributing things for ACB, you know, we'll, who are some brilliant, brilliant, brilliant fights there. All over the world. That's what we're going to do, and people have been enjoying it. But before that, I, I put it up, and Mark texted me, my coach Mark Henry, to talk about how much he enjoyed it. And I remember I actually said that, that Frankie's punch was smooth like a beautiful woman in an evening dress or something like that. And Mark was like, you know, people might think you talk crazy, but he was very complimentary to it. Um, and I'm just getting a bunch of texts. Nothing is too dramatically uh, urgent right now, although I will text my wife uh, just telling her that we'll be 45 more minutes. Um, but uh, Mark, I pointed out that that uh, Frankie took a wide lane, a wide track outside of um, outside of Chad's punch. And Mark and I discussed, he said, we, we train that hundreds and hundreds of sessions, so thousands of shots. And he said what they noticed was that, that Chad took a wide track, so they were going to take an even wider one, an even wider one. So he would use the wide track to get to your chin and Frankie would have an even wider one where his chin was even further and he'd his hand was even further so from his chin to his knuckles to your chin was all strategized in such a way that they would miss so there were lines of traffic his traffic and your traffic and it was by design and and coach Mark said you know do you know how much work that is and how hard it is when you have Frankie's think about it Frankie's trained the slip right hand or there's many other people pull back right hand, or you know, I, Dwayne was uh, um, sent a, a comment on my um, Instagram post and rear hand hook um, pull rear hand hook, however you want to call it, a rear hand. It's the rear hand. It could be over rear hand hook. I think is an even more concise way, which should be no surprise. Dwayne's brilliant. Um, Mark called it something else. There's many different ways to do it, but we know what we're talking. You know, I, I, we all understand it's the same conversation in its own, you know, little detailed way. Frankie has trained that slip or, or wide or weave right hand counter, I don't know, 40,000 times in his life. Now we have to retrain him. It's harder than training you because you, you, we start you from scratch. And in six months, we'd teach you this. You wouldn't be as good at it. You wouldn't hit as hard. It wouldn't be as clean. But at least we were not having to counteract programming. Frankie's already developed that punch. We have to retrain it. So that was a lot of work. And it was brilliant to see. You go back and watch that one. And then watch in slow motion as he lands that. The left hook, there's a little pause, I believe, or an off-tempo time on Frankie's left hook. And it is really one of the great. I, me and Ram Dean were there. And I talked to Ram Dean today. He sends his love. Um, it was a wonderful. And then we went to Joe's podcast or Joe's uh, comedy show that night after. But uh, brilliant one. Um, but this the same thing. They designed that. They ran that play. And then he was in a better state of performance at the time. And uh, he deserves all the credit. TJ, his coach, his training partners, the work itself. Credit the work. Don't don't look for the the excuses. It's you can don't don't let me tell you what to do, but I don't think you're going to find joy and and beauty in it. Um, Demetrius Johnson, uh, quick thoughts on this while we're still on after the hostilities. Thank you for hanging in here with me. I appreciate you, uh, Demetrius Johnson. Uh, if you were going to beat him so quickly at one time, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but I have been asked uh, by a coach of a high level fighter to that was fighting for a title to break down how you'd beat the best fighter in the world. Um, I'm not going to go into more detail than that. It was a very big honor. And uh, they were serious, and it was paying and everything. And I thought about it, and I was thrilled and touched and, and humbled because I don't think I'm you know, going to be the difference on something like that. But uh, I rejected it after talking to Firas and Duke and others because I... Learned so much going to their gyms and being welcomed in and being shown some of the, you know, the, the recipe and you know the ingredients of the stew and or what's under the hood or whatever metaphor you want to use, and so I don't want to ever 
give away any of that stuff. I'll share things that I know that they say it's okay to share and I'll do it from a state of celebration of their fighters and their skills, but I'm not giving away secrets. And I certainly can't give away, give analysis where in the future now you would invite me into your gym and worry that I might give some insight. I've been asked this before, um, so I don't do that. But uh, if I was, um, my response on any of these guys these days, how do you beat George St. Pierre? How do you beat Demetrius Johnson? Uh, who else is like like ultimate best of the best? I mean, TJ might be one of these that you'd have to ask. How do you beat TJ? John Jones. How do you beat John Jones, right? Uh, so the answer, the, the true answer, is that there are going to be um, two, three logical ways that this is going to happen. And this is, I'm not fucking rocket sciencing anything right here. One, you're going to catch them probably early, uh, and knock them out. Two, you're going to catch them probably early and stun them good enough to choke them. Three, you're going to somehow have to win a decision. There's going to be some keys to this. It's not, not impossible by any stretch of the imagination. This is very hard because John Jones was the perfect example. And, and, uh, Dan will be an example of that now too. Cormier. Um, with John Jones, Cormier, the first time, and um, Gustafson, they almost did exactly what I'm going to describe here. And they almost did exactly what, what Henry did. Credit to Henry, too. Don't go looking for explanations of, of Demetrius. He's not doing that. He's not doing that. He's saying, I lost that fight. I'm going to tell you quickly this insight, and then I'm going to talk about judging and those things quickly, and then we will move on to some questions. After that, we will move on to very short because my brain is getting tired. Very short analysis. That's this, the beginning of what we're going to look at with Connor versus Habib, and we are going to go in depth over the next eight weeks. So first off, if you're going to beat one of those guys and you're not going to catch them, there's no rocket science there. You can catch them. One with aggression, with them being unprepared. Uh, Tyron Woodley's brilliant. Uh, part of how he caught Robbie Lawler was. He was unprepared for the athleticism and mystified him in those moments. So that was a brilliant example of it. All credit to him. No, nobody made any mistakes in there. He mi again, I had another breakdown on the on the Instagram page of that and and how he did that in such a short time. Um, but that's gone now. <laughs> so you might find it on Twitter though at Robin Black MMA. Um, but so you could catch them. And uh, but if you're going to beat them. How's it going to happen? Well, you have to be in as good a shape as them, which is very hard with all those fighters. And you have to stay mentally tough, which is very hard with all those fighters. And let's say you can do that. Then what has to happen is you have to win some small battles at key moments and then have either be able to do it and have exposed some little thing that helps you do it a little more or get a little bit of good fortune from the, the observers. And the key moments is a big one of them. Right. So that's what Henry did. And that's a good example of what Johnny Hendricks did against Robbie Lawler. Yeah. And it was key moments. Yeah. Key Johnny exchanges. Hendricks did that against Robbie Lawler the first time. And there's an argument for anyone who did think that George beat Hendricks. George did that against Hendricks. Yeah. He went and Hendricks. I don't know. That was his greatest era. You can debate how and why that is so. But it, he earned all that. Uh, but George didn't win the largest portions of that fight, but found the key moments to convince three human beings that he won. And that is no disrespect to Johnny Hendricks for his victory over Lawler, no disrespect for George St. Pierre for his victory over Hendricks, and zero disrespect for, um, for Henry Ciudo for his win over Demetrius Johnson. And if Gustafson or, or Cormier was given those fights, it would have been no disrespect to those guys too. They were very fucking close. It's the same thing. That's why same thing with Condit versus Lawler. I honestly think if Condit yeah. went for a takedown and held him down that last round, he would yeah. have been champion. Yeah, but he Condit decided to Lawler, stand. And there are Condit Lawler. These are imperfect examples because Condit Lawler and Gustafson, John Jones, are much closer and much less debatable than Henry or George, uh, or uh, than Henry's victory or George's victory. Um, but the the principles are the same. You must win moments at the key times in small battles. And that's what Henry did. And Henry Ciudo is the flyweight champion of the world. Now, I'm going to talk about those battles in just a second, but before we go any further, people, uh, and again, please don't fucking, 
I am not trying to undermine people or slag them or insult anyone. So please, if it's coming out that way, one, forgive me, and two, let me know how I can do this better. Um, but it is your prerogative to spend days or hours or effort or time or focus debating whether or not a decision was correct. But in my humble opinion, you're wasting your time and your effort and your focus because it's fact. It's done. It's done. And if we have some influence to change it, by all means, do. But talking about it or complaining about it is not such an influence. It's just, it's draining us. It's draining us. It doesn't matter. It has no meaning. Because for those two or three days, we'll debate that stuff. And then history won't give a shit. It'll have no meaning in the future. We're only doing it because of our frustration with things that seem unfair. And that's normal. That's quite normal. Of course, when things seem unfair, we don't, that's, you know, we don't like that. None of us do. We don't feel good about that. It creates tension and stress. But the world is unfair. It is. It is unfair. And it is unforgiving. But if I may, when you see Demetrius Johnson, only moments after he lost, you know, after his lovely family, something that's one of, and his people closest to him, one of the most precious things he's ever had. And that was taken from him in that moment by Henry and by the perspectives of people entrusted with making that choice. And he didn't bitch and he didn't complain and he didn't whine and he didn't cry and he didn't, he's not, he just accepted it. Why is that better? Because he's quicker to the dealing with the truth. That's the truth. The truth is he's not the champion anymore. That's the truth. Why am I saying this? I'm hoping this is useful for us. If you can see Demetrius Johnson, accept this is the truth and I will move on from it. What does moving on look like? Healings, being with your family, examining what you're doing, enjoying a bit of life and distraction, then getting back to it with a full focus and a renewed enthusiasm or whatever his looks like. But he can go to it now. He fucking seconds later, that man accepted that. We need to learn from these people. These are the greatest, some of the greatest performers or athletes or artists, whatever you want to say. There's a lesson. Did I not? Okay, no. I thought I might have knocked over some juice. Uh, there's a lesson there. While well, we all sit there and argue 10 nines and did, was the takedown at the right time? Did the judges get it right? How would you change judging? What if you put the takedown at the beginning and the striking at the end? There was only three minutes of control versus 12 minutes. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? We're only doing that because we were taught that by television. Everybody argues about everything. Every single news channel, every single sports channel, and they, they take no responsibility for it. They take no responsibility. They don't even believe what I'm... If, they, if a producer of a sporting segment or a, or a po political segment saw me say this, they'd be like, oh, what is that guy talking about? It's your fault. The reason we all argue is because people for much of our adult lives have been on television arguing. Two people choose a different site and then they argue and the people behind the scenes tell them to do that. And if they're not doing enough, they pop into the little thing in their ear and tell them to do it more. We're taught. We're conditioned. It doesn't matter. At all. If you can let shit, Demetrius Johnson can let that go, you can let that go. And if you can learn from him to let it go, you're going to let go other things in your life that you can't get past. It's not easy. I left, they, they cut my department at Fight Network like 16 months ago. And every now and again, it'll pop up. I'll be like, those guys are fucking idiots. Look, they're, they're made all kinds of errors since. That was a mistake. And ever since, then you can go down that road. They were human. But we work on it. We learn from Demetrius Johnson. It doesn't matter. Henry Ciudo is the flyweight champion of the world. He did it by winning the small battles in the key moments and in the eyes of three people in, entrusted to make that choice. He did exactly what he wanted to do. He won. He won. Did he earn it? Yes. Because earning it was winning the small battles at the key moments to influence the, the opinion of the people entrusted with deciding it. That shit's done. It has sailed. Is he better than Demetrius Johnson? I don't think he is better than Demetrius Johnson. I don't think, I, I really don't yet, but he's getting better all the time. 
He's talented, fucking hardworking, brilliant, focused, skilled, tough, strong, big, committed. He's all these things. But I think Demetrius is one of the greats ever. Uh, but on this night, was he better? Yeah, for this purpose he was. This is a fucking sport. If it was me and we could remove these things, these guys would fight forever until one of them gave up or somebody stopped it because they were too hurt and they couldn't continue. Or they were out. That's it. That's not it. Would there be 12 to 6 elbows? Yeah. Would there be kicks to the head of a down opponent? Yeah. Would there be punching and scratching and hits in the groin? Yeah, there would. That's, I would want pure martial arts. But that isn't that. It's five rounds, three judges, a scoring criteria. This guy fucking won. He won. Let him have it. And learn from Demetrius Johnson. He accepted it. And why is that good? Because he can focus on the future. And not be tormented by it. I've seen this. I've seen fighters. I've seen coaches more, actually. Tormented. Weeks later, they're sending fucking emails and protests. It's never going to happen. Did this guy win? This guy won. How did he win? He won the small battles at the key moments in the eyes of the people entrusted to make that decision. He's the champion of the world. Good on you, Henry Cejudo. You earned that. You did it. Good on you.